G'day, Richard Musgrave Evans here again and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting more of my minimalist plain air technique using just palette knife and oil paint on clear primed Belgian linen. Okay, let's give it a go. Alright, g'day there. I'm Richard Musgrave Evans and I'm in something a little different this time. Country Australia instead of the outback. Beautiful greens and dams and whatnot but still using the same equipment and the same style. So what I'll be doing is I'm painting on, if you haven't seen my videos before, I paint on clear prime Belgian linen quite often. That's a nice neutral color. It looks like it's raw, but it's actually got a clear protective primer. Oil paint and only palette knives. All right, so first I've blocked it in just a little bit just to get a feeling of composition with a few of the darks. Now what I'll do is go for the biggest differences. Okay, so what I might actually do, start putting that water in because that is a bit of a feature of the picture. So what colour is that water today? Every day the water is different. I'm going to try Viridian Green and Burnt Sienna to start with. Let's have a look at that. Now it's got more yellow ochre. I can see straight up there's more yellow ochre in it than that. So we've got yellow ochre, Viridian Green, some Burnt Sienna. Let's just have a tester. Not too bad, so now hang on. Which side am I going to stand today? Stand here, get this in. A bit more of that colours of yellow ochre, Viridian green, burnt sienna. I'm going to have to make sure I'm not standing in the way because I can see that could be a problem today. Very interesting, alright. It's all part of it. Not only do I have to paint a picture, but I've got to make sure that I'm not in the way. <laughs> What's the point in painting if you can't actually see what I'm doing? Just basically get that in with all different brush drops, palette knife marks to start with. Now I'm just going to stand back and have a quick look at the composition. Okay. Now I notice as it's getting closer to the edge of the bank, it's much more burnt sienna and yellow ochre and there's less green in it. Oop. Can you hear that? Someone's got the chainsaw out. Right, so let's have a look. A bit more burnt sienna. Yeah, that's a nice colour. Just bang that in there. Keep this paint fairly thin for the water, fairly thin. It's quite shallow in the foreground here, so I've put that. I've got the same sort of uh, transparency of the water there. Because it's quite shallow. Right now, in the middle you'll see that there's a bit of pale really pale blue there so that's a reflection of the sky so let's just mix up a bit of sky colour here with a little bit of blue maybe a touch of magenta to knock it back a bit a little white it's quite a pale tone today quite pale if I go a bit of burnt sienna to knock the uh, intensity of the blue off it'll just grey it that little bit Oh, that chainsaw really is going off now. Just get that in to start with and work it all out later. Stand back and have a look. Okay, now with a clean knife, just pull straight down like so. Wipe it clean every time. Pull through. Now 
Actually, where's the big guns? I'll get the big knife out. The big knife's great for this sort of blending. Where you can just do one big mark like so and just pull through. Wipe it absolutely clean for the next shot. Well, that was a bit of fun. Okay, that's a nice, it's fun using that knife. All right, so now I've got this guy tone. What color is the sky today? All right, very pale because we're looking into the light. White, blue. Hmm, that looks a little bit too green to me. A little bit too green. Magenta to change that colour. The blue. Let's get that in there. Try not to touch those shadow tones of the tree too much just yet. I'll blend all that later. For now, let's get that in like that. A bit more blue as I go higher. A little bit more magenta maybe. Get all that paint in for now and work it out later. Okay, clean blue, clean magenta, clean white. There's no burnt sienna in this, so it's actually a stronger brew. Needs to go a bit darker though. A little bit more red, a little bit more blue. Let's get it on first. Get it on. Get it a bit, little bit blend, 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 blend a little bit. Okay, let's have a look. It's all good. Need more of a uh, warm tone. Looking into the light, there's more of a warm tone down on the horizon. I'm going for some yellow acre, burnt sienna and white. Mix it separately over here. Now yeah, just have a look what I've got. Put it in like so. Start blending it up into the sky colour. Got that clean. Getting that atmospheric colour blended into that blue as well, so it's not like radically contrasting it. Get the blues down in there. Get the warmer tones. Yeah, I'm going to paint a bit more of that shadow colour. What is that shadow colour today? It is magenta, green, white, a bit of blue, more blue, more magenta, more green. 
Touch of brown, maybe. Let's have a look at that. Just lightly putting the shadows in. Stick those shadows in, and uh, then I'll paint the light source over the top of it. It's actually easy with oil paint to paint light over the top of dark. You can do the opposite, but to start off with, it's best to just do it light on dark first. Then if you mess up later on, you can change the whole thing and do it the opposite way. Just getting that foliage in a bit. Now I'm painting a bit of blue and green here, a bit of white. Just going to paint the shadows on the ground themselves. They kind of run around nicely like so. A bit more blue as it recedes, go a lighter tone with a little bit more blue as, as it goes back. So those shadows back here are a little bit lighter. Always working, always working with the biggest differences between what you're looking at and your canvas, or your linen in this case. Now it's time to put some grass on. We'll use some of that, uh, it's quite green. As you know I paint, usually paint things that are rich and outback and red earth and whatever, but it's actually interesting to paint a bit of green in the landscape. It won't be green for much longer because summer's on the way. It's good to vary the tones too. All the subtle colours in the paddock, particularly as it's starting to dry now, you get the greens and then you get the subtle browns and all the different variants. It's good to pick up on that variance. Now, I've got a different colour in the back corner here. I've got lemon yellow today if I need it. I don't normally use the colour so bright, but if I need it today, I will use it. Just mixing a bit of white with the Viridian green. Intensify the sting just there. That needs more yellow ochre. Now, there's a burnt sienna over here with the yellow ochre, more of a straw colour up here, it's got more of that straw colour as it's already starting to dry. Wow, someone's got the mower out in the distance. It's all uh, spring, it's all the action. Hell, it sounds wild. I don't know if you can hear it or not. Okay, in one. Right now, there's a nice colour in the bank, so I'll pull that out. Get that one done next, so I might go a bit of cat orange with that colour to really sting it up. Hmm. More burnt sienna, more white. Lighter tone and more of that earthy tone. 
Before I go any further, just going to bung in more of that shadow colour before I put the light tone on. Let's have a look at this. up a nice sort of neutral shadowy sort of tone. There's a bit more blue in it too. Get those shadows in first and then when you apply when you apply the light source over the top it's a lot easier. Keep them fairly thin, you don't have to go crazy on thickness with those ones. Okay, another bin run. Oh, it's beautiful out here today, beautiful day. Just a light breeze. The serenity of the mower going. Which is actually not what I planned, but oh well, that's part of it. Lighten that tone a little bit. Now I can take, what I'll do is pull some of it through, just to make it all lovely. But I'll also slightly go this way and just take a bit of it off. This hour, it's a beautiful day like I said, and as the light's going around, it's becoming more interesting. There's a bit more of a highlight on the edge of the dam, which will be good to put in later on. All right, so what have I got so far? Well and good now. I'll paint the negative space in here. What I mean by negative space is uh, you've got the light and shadow on the hill where the trees are where the light is in between the trees, I'm filling that part in now, in through the middle here. So far I'm just mucking around with these, pretty much the one knife and just as you saw, I used the big one before, pretty much using this one for most of the work. Now that paddock back there is a little bit darker green, keyed off a bit. It's just a little hill back here. Guess what? There's some blue hills right on the horizon. And there's not much space, so I'm going for a smaller knife. I know, I said I wouldn't, but there you go. You never know what you're gonna do until you do it. <laughs> so magenta and blue. Just on the horizon here's some nice little pale blue hills. They could go a lighter tone than that actually. Just 
lightly putting a bit in. Now I'm putting some a little bit of dark on light because there's a few patches missing, so I'm very lightly touching for the foliage. Just lightly drawing by just dragging it across and getting the tops and edges of those distant trees. Green and blue and whatever. darker tone here again. Just work out where I want the wet and the dry to be on the edge of this dam. Start putting it in. Very delicate little strokes just drawing the edge. Hit and miss. Must and found. white. Just drop it in a few highlights on the edge there where the wet sand is on the edge of the bank. Going back to those negative spaces, drawing a few verticals for where the trunks go. Find some of the light source on the trees now. What are we going to go with today? It's a fairly dark neutral colour. Let's just try that one. Very lightly touch. Whoops, hang on. Very lightly drag it over with the palette knife. Needs a bit more blue green in it today. Just touching. Okay, now. Smear some of those to take some of the paint actually back off again. So I'm actually wiping the knife clean, smearing, so I'm actually taking paint off rather than applying paint. Using random marks. working around the subject if you find something's not right then go back to it I just want to take a couple of those dark blue marks out never finish anything at once always keep working around the canvas and bring it up evenly and yellow 
a little bit more colour on this side, so I'm going to put it in. Not quite like that though. Let's have a look at that. Lighten that a bit. These distant trees are very silhouetted because I'm kind of I'm looking into the light and they're pretty much all there's not a lot of a highlight on the top, they're pretty much just a silhouette. So you don't want to get carried away with too much of a highlight with that one. Just dragging the paint through a little bit. Actually cleaning the knife each time. Pulling the paint through to blend it a little bit more. Let's pull it through again. Look, that's why you got to wipe the knife clean because. I didn't wipe it clean, then I got one of these in the sky, so now I've got to beat that off. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, so now I'm clean. make a kind of pale grey blue over here. It's going to mix a big trunk colour so I'm just getting some pale pale colours, kind of grey but light tone. Just draw them in a little bit, don't get too carried away. I'm going to take that one off, that was too much, so I'm going to go like that. Got a few trunks over here also. With the pellet knife on edge, I'm just working with a massive pellet knife, but on edge. Dead foliage here and there. Too much, take it off. Take some of that paint off to clean it up. and brown and white, burnt sienna, alizarin, what do we got here? Cat orange, white, burnt sienna. Just want to make a bit more of a chunky highlight with that cliff. The edge of that bank, I mean. You can see a bit of a track around the edge where the cows have been walking around the paddock, so that adds a bit of variety and interest, put that in. Getting there. Clean the knife again. I'll just take a bit of a ridge out of here. I can see a bit of a ridge. I want that water to be absolutely soft. I don't want it to be harsh. I want the water to contrast. I want the softness of the water against the chunkiness of the rest of the technique. Then they'll really pop against each other. So they just lightly blend it. Lightly 
lightly blend it through. And there's a bug landed in here, so I might lightly blend the bug through. Okay, so what do we got now? Maybe just a few highlights with this CAD sort of colour. The brighter. Just here, the grass is starting to dry out and it's putting some subtle, warm and cool variances in the green. Like I said earlier, that can be a really good thing to bring up. And also, a bit of draftsmanship. I don't want the edge of this picture to fall out, so I'm going to actually tilt it that way a little. Some white, some orange half mix. Oops. Now with this palette knife, I'm going to get all this paint off because it's absolutely chunks of paint. Just going to take some paint off here, clean the edge of this. Take the paint back for a clean branch. adding more foliage and more detail. Well not foliage, why do I keep saying that? I'm adding the branches, adding the branches to the trees. Just the knife on edge again, little highlights here and there to pull it out. Always varying the angle, never the same. some of that off, that was too much. That's why you need to stand back, you can judge better what you want to do. You can just maybe pop that there, bit of a stinging accent. Might just get that little bug out of there. Have a look. That's pretty good now. Just a little bit lighter blue because I want to do a receded version. I've lightened the tone and cooled it off a little bit. Just to take it back. Same time, a clean knife. Pull that in. Magenta, 
lighten her off a bit with a bit of blue and magenta, make a beautiful pale sort of tone, like a trunky sort of musty colour. Misty. Just uh just to bring out a few subtle trunks that are in the shadows rather than being in the full light source. Because you've got all those trunks and some of them are in shadow and they're quite a pale trunk, so they're quite a light tone. Take some of that paint off. All right, now, with the tiniest knife, I can just see a few fence posts. I might just bung them in for a bit of a variety. Mix up a nice sort of shadowy colour again with those magentas and blues and stuff. Similar tone to what we've already got out there. So, Start drawing with the knife on the edge again. Clean knife because very lightly pull through here. Very lightly indeed. Okay, so we're just about there. Just about. What I might just do is again, just on edge, just pull some really nice light tones through. Couple of highlights. All right, well there you go, that's about it. That was an enjoyable experience. It's uh, good to paint something different every now and then. And uh, yeah, I was really enjoying those different colors that I'm normally working with. I always enjoy painting water, it's a bit of fun. I don't think it's come up too bad, so what I'll do is I'll get the camera off and let you have a look. No worries, thank you. Okay, let's go in and have a look what we've got here. All right, now you can see I've really enjoyed the uh, the water and the bank. And this is where the edge of the bank meets the water and you get to put all those subtle reflections and beautiful stuff. Here with all those really soft marks, like I said, really contrast the rest of the technique. Gives your eye a great resting place for the more uh, chaotic technique, I guess you could say. If you have a look at up close, You'll see it's all silhouetted with beautiful marks of light and shadow and smears of colour. 
you'll see through the paddock how I've put the warm and cool contrast to break up the green and as it recedes off into the cooler distance and the blues of the, the distant range there you go nice sunny day beautiful dam in country Australia no worries thank you